I'm Tim Delaney from Financial Training Partners. In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the rise and fall of Kodak. It's the first of a two-part series on an important question in risk analysis. Why do so many market leaders, with all their advantages, fall to new competitors with new technology or with lower costs? George Eastman, a bank clerk in Rochester, New York, and a talented chemist, founded Kodak in 1883 to solve a problem. Back then, photography was difficult, cameras were bulky, and prints were hard to make. Eastman invented rolled film in 1883. He made up a name for it he thought would be easy to remember, Kodak, and a few years later he introduced the first camera for ordinary people and marketed it with the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. Eastman figured out what consumers wanted and he gave it to them. Cameras that were easy to use and low cost, quick convenient processing, high quality long-lasting prints, and an easy way to show and save them. The Kodak camera and Kodak film created an industry, mass market consumer photography, and Kodak dominated it for more than a century. In 1976, it sold 85% of the cameras and 90% of the film in the United States. As late as 2000, it still had an 80% share in film, revenues of almost $14 billion, and a 24% operating margin. Kodak was one of the most successful consumer product companies of all time. Kodak's success came from attracting customers with low-priced cameras, then selling them film and prints at higher prices. It was a classic razor and blade business, with cameras acting as the razor and film and prints as the blades. Kodak didn't make much money in cameras. It never tried to. The profits came from film and prints instead. By some estimates, the gross margin in film and prints was 75%. Around 1995, all that started to change when digital cameras came on the market. What people wanted was the same, but the way they got it was very different. They wanted cameras to take the pictures and do the image processing, along with computers, computers to do the storage, and the internet to handle the display. And digital photography came on fast. By 2003, Digital cameras passed film cameras in sales. By 2010, the film camera market was dead. And as camera sales fell, so did the sales of film. Digital tore the high margin heart right out of Kodak's film-based business model. That was a big problem for Kodak, but it wasn't necessarily a fatal one. Kodak made digital cameras too. In fact, Kodak invented the digital camera back in 1975, and it introduced the first digital camera for consumers in 1995. In 2001, it was among the first to come out with a line of point-and-shoot digital cameras aimed at the mass market. Kodak had good prices. Not even Canon, the market leader, could beat Kodak on price for digital cameras. But Kodak was not the leader in digital camera quality. As the editor of Popular Photography magazine said, Kodak cameras just weren't as good as the cameras from other companies. So Kodak was not the leader in digital cameras in spite of its lead in technology and pricing. It was number seven behind Canon, Sony, Nikon, and others, and its share was only about one-third Canon's share. Kodak was in the other important digital market, image sharing. It acquired an online photo sharing site in 2001 and renamed it Kodak Gallery. But as the ratings show, the site was much better at selling prints, Kodak's traditional business, than it was at uploading images, the function that digital consumers cared about the most. Kodak Gallery never had as much traffic as Flickr and Picasa, the leading photo sharing sites at the time. Kodak never developed design and marketing skills or manufacturing efficiencies to compete in cameras 
It never understood online image sharing. So Kodak never made any money in digital, and there was nothing to offset the decline in its film business. Kodak's sales fell by almost 60% from 2005 to 2011, and it had eight consecutive years of operating losses. Cash flow dried up. Credit ratings fell. Kodak's access to internal and external funding became more and more limited. Liquidity got worse and worse. By late 2011, it was all over. Kodak had nowhere to go in photography. It filed for bankruptcy in January 2012. How could a company as dominant as Kodak allow itself to be defeated by a competing technology? Be sure to see our next post where I'll talk about how Kodak was trapped by what we call the incumbent's dilemma.